Hello and welcome. This is Gavin from Scholastic Headquarters, and we're here today with Tui T. Sutherland. Hi, everybody. Who is, this is, I, this is, this is huge. We have a huge crowd out there. Um, <laughs> I think this is going to be our, this is going to be our biggest, our biggest chat yet. So we're so excited to have you here. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm really excited yeah. to be here. So in case anyone doesn't know, of course, I'm sure you're all here because you know, but Tui is the author of the Wings of Fire series. We're here to celebrate book seven which is just coming out and is incredibly fun and also an amazing cover as well in addition to the great story inside. And of course, Tui is a Spirit Animals author, for those of you coming from Spirit Animals, um, which is just incredible to have you here. She's been around the office uh, with everybody. So I want to explain how this is going to work before we get started. Um, we're going to do three things. First, we're going to talk about pronunciation. Sure. And then we're going to have a little discussion of all of the series for everyone, for those of, those who haven't read Book 7 yet. And then finally, as a really special treat, we're going to talk about things that only people who read Book 7 should go into. So there will be spoilers there. But first off, okay. let's, talk about, let's talk about how to pronounce it. One of the most common questions we get is, how do you say yeah. these words? <laughs> these words. So the first one up is your name. <laughs> okay. So my name is pronounced Tui. It's the kind of bird that only lives in New Zealand. And it's so Tui. But I won't be offended if you get it wrong. <laughs> that happens to me a lot. <laughs> Do you subtly correct people? Or are you <laughs> You know, Alex Trebek got it wrong on Jeopardy, even. Uh, yes. <laughs> he said it, like, several times correctly, and then suddenly, wrong. I was like, Alex Trebek, come on. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposed to know everything. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next up, I won't even try. It's Pyrea. Pyrea. Yeah. Can I get it right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> That's great. The double R. You don't roll the R? Pyrea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, Pyria is Pyria. correct pronunciation. Yep. All right, and final, finally. So for this one, you can actually say Kibli or Kibli. He doesn't mind either way. I say Kibli, but Kibli. Kibli, is, Kibli is just as right. Okay, what a great name. <laughs> is there a story behind that name? Um, it's a, it's just, a, it's a word that means like storm of sands. Okay. So, cool. so perfect, <laughs> perfect yeah, for him. For the same thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So, and we've got, I know everybody out there, they look so excited. Um, <laughs> as we go, feel free to throw in your questions. Um, we're gonna. We have a bunch of questions we took from the forums. All the questions that you guys put in, yeah. and as you go, just feel free to ask. So we we don't have a whole lot of time. So let's just jump right in. Okay. Um, so dragons. Everyone wants to know how this crazy world that you invented works, and all the little details of it. Uh, the first one is from Dragon Elf forty seven ninety, about how dragons age. Are there dragon years? Um, well, so I don't. Yes. So the dragons basically age. They, they're from hatching to age seven. They grow pretty quickly. Um, so when they're age seven is when they're pretty much full grown. Um, but they get a little bit bigger than after every year after that. So mm -hmm. um, so the oldest dragons are also the biggest dragons. But they're all but within like a reasonable range. They're pretty close okay. to each other. So um, but yeah. They're so by by seven they're like. Older teenagers, basically. Yeah, and there's some really old dragons in this series. There are, yes. Was, how did you decide to do that? Was that you just... It, it's a big decision to have people who could be essentially any age. Yeah. Uh, well, so most of the main dragons can only get to be about 150. Like okay. I say, that's the oldest for, like, a regular dragon. Um, but then, of course, we've got Darkstalker. So... <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, great. Okay, so um, Queen Scarlet... Uh, everyone's fascinated with Queen Scarlet, and they want to know... This is a question from Periwinkle Panther... Uh, how did Queen Scarlet get so evil and so vain? Is there is there a hint of backstory there? Um, well, I think she's kind of always been like that. She definitely was one of those dragons who really wanted to to seize the throne and keep the throne. And you'll see a lot more of her in Book Eight and sort of her mm. her story. But um, I think one of the things I, I like about writing these dragons is that I can give you sort of, they don't think they're evil. She doesn't think she's evil. And I like yeah. that there's a moment in, in Winter Turning, this isn't a big spoiler, where she's like, well, you know, all these terrible things have happened to me. Like, if somebody melted my face off, where's my rotten band of loyal idiots? And you're yeah. like, <laughs> that's true. You know, if she had a, her, you know, we could be seeing her side of the story. But yeah, yeah no, I think she's just pretty much wants to be in charge and has used manipulation to... Yeah, well, that's one of the great things about your characters, how they each have so much, there's so much thought that goes into them. Yeah. And they each have things, so, <laughs> so. We'll, we'll get into that later <laughs> as well. I do think about them uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, well, you spent, I mean, you spent so much time with them after all these <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> seven <true>. books now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, great, so this is, this is a forum, and we have, we have a lot of conversations about shipping. 
Uh, how did you first learn about this whole shipping thing? What's your reaction, your reaction been to all of the excitement about the possibilities of shipping? The shipping. Um, well, to, honestly, I'm a total shipper too. Like I actually, I knew about shipping before and I, uh, I've shipped uh, characters on other shows and in books that I've read. So I'm with you guys. I am, a, I am, I am absolutely a shipper. And, uh, you know, I, I, but, but it's so weird to be the one in control of that, you know, cause yeah. I can, and, it, and with such a long series, I feel like I can, um, I can drag out the, the, the answers because anything could change, you know, over time. So, yeah. um, but no, I love you guys. I love the, like the, the super shippers. <laughs> yeah, they're, and they're just listing out all their favorites right now. <laughs> I can see, I can see. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to keep reading and find out what happens. Yep. It's true. <laughs> I can answer, can I answer the other shipping question? Oh, about, feel free. There was a question about, um, yeah. which ships are canon. Um, mm. and I think, um, what I would say as of book seven, and this is also, I don't think a big spoiler for book seven, is that the only ship that I'd say is definitely canon is Glory and Deathbringer, uh, Glorybringer, um, <laughs> <laughs> because, um, they're definitely a couple, they know they're a couple, and, um, they may not, like, tell everybody about it, but I think that's definitely true for them, whereas I think a lot of the others are still figuring things out. Oh, what does canon mean? What does shipping mean? It's like, who do we want, which characters do we want to get together? And canon means they are really together, like, in the world of the series, not just, like, yeah. in our imaginations. <laughs> um, yeah, canon means it's in the books, and you actually decided it. Yes, and yes. I believe it's true. So. But everything else is just us making things up for fun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, until I make it up for fun. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Um, so... A lot of a lot of the a lot of us the kids out there um, love writing and love being authors and I've seen they've, they've written some amazing fan fiction. What yeah. tips would you have for someone who's an inspiring author? Um, I well, first of all, I love I love how many of you guys are authors, and I love when you post um, stories on the forums, even if I don't get to read them all. Um, and I, I I highly encourage that. I definitely think that um, anyone who wants to be a writer, like write what you are excited about, um, and. Uh, and and um, I'm very distracted by all the exciting questions coming <laughs> over here. Sorry, <laughs> I'm Covered like, oh, I don't want to answer all that. I know. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I, I you know I'd say um, write for fun and write what you enjoy. And I think fan fiction is a great way to do that. Like I am a I'm I'm a big fan of fan fiction. Like I think jump into yeah. the worlds that you're excited about. And um, for aspiring authors, just and also read a lot. Obviously, every author says that when they're asked this question. But I think read um, and find out what you love and talk about stories with people. So, I mean, my poor husband is not a writer, but he gets to hear a, like what I think about storytelling all the time with all the TV shows we watch. I'm like, no, this was wrong because they needed to set up this for this character, or oh, that's clearly going to happen because you know. And I think thinking about stories that much um, is good for. Um, aspiring authors so. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's great um and also another another kind of uh author craft question the you choose you choose a point of view for each book how did you decide uh, how did you decide which point of view to do for book seven and what's your what's your strategy of deciding whose point of view a story should come from sure oh good question yeah um well so that requires a lot of thought and especially for the the next set of five so for the original set it would be obvious like five dragons that i started with um but for books six through ten i had to figure out um yeah i, I knew i um i knew i wanted an ice wing i knew um that i wanted to bring back a couple of characters we've seen before um <laughs> okay i don't think i should sing the dragon song you guys <laughs> what's the dragons can you sing it is there a... There's, a there's a song in book one i mean i i'm i'm a terrible singer <laughs> But well, you have a melody idea. for it, right? I, well, okay, here's the thing. I, I do, except that every time I sing it, it's going to sound different because I am a terrible singer. <laughs> so it's not going to help you guys very much. I tell you, next time you come, we'll learn the song and we'll all sing it with you. Okay. <laughs> and then we can perform it for everybody. That sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> Um, what was the actual question? Uh, okay, well, well, we're talking about points of view. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, so one of the questions is, why doesn't Kinkajou get her own book? And, um, and part of that was because um, what I'm doing in each book is thinking about where's the character going, and, um, and what is... Um, and where do I, where do I, what, which characters need to change the most? And I actually feel like Kinkajou is pretty okay. Like, she's been through, like, some of the terrible things she had to go through already. And, um, but I think she's, like, fairly okay with her character, whereas I feel like Peril needs to grow a lot, and Winter needed to grow a lot, and Moon had to get to a different place with her character. So that's where I, that's what really I, helps me choose the main characters yeah. for each book, is which ones are, um, need to get from one place to another by the end of the book the most. Um, so poor King Kadu. Uh, I love her <laughs> very much, but I, but I almost love her too much. Like, she's kind of, I, I think she's, 
I think she's okay the way she is. She's very I don't set need up, to yeah. change her very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's a, and she's a little bit like Sunny. Like I feel like she already has that sort of voice that that Sunny did. So I don't awesome. want to do that again. So. Great. Yeah. Um, so another question about sort of the world, the, the this world that you've created, um, and hybrids, which everyone's fascinated by because it's mm-hmm. just it, can hybrids have children? Um, yes. Yeah, I saw a bunch okay. of people ask that on the forums. Yeah. Um, yes, in my point of view, I, I, I definitely think Sunny should get to have kids if she wants to, for instance. Yeah. So, yes, the hybrids can have children. Great. Cool. <laughs> okay, and here's one, actually, Griffin Soul and a number of other people have asked how big dragons are compared to scavengers. Yeah. As we hear our scavengers. <laughs> uh, and there's a secret of Book 7, which is in the back, it actually shows you. Yeah. You're a tiny little scavenger. But if you want to see the exact thing, you'll have to get the real book. Yeah, you'll have to get the book. <laughs> <laughs> and find out why that's in there. But yeah, I love that little, that little, it's a letter, actually. It's, yeah. it's kind of separate from the whole thing, and it's, it's just a great, hilarious little little story <laughs> about a scavenger and a dragon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, Blair and Smolder, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, yeah, so clearly some people have read it already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay. How many of you actually have read the book already, and who, who's still waiting to get it? We'll have to wait a minute for them to <laughs> get back to us on that. <laughs> Totally. Yay. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to say what my favorite character is, you guys. I um, because it changes with, with each new book, you know. Um, I I have a soft spot for Clay because he was the first one, and I love him so much. Um, but Glory is super fun to write, so I really like her. And then Sunny, I feel like it's very similar to my point of view on life. Um, and then Moon was yeah. fun. I guess I, yeah, so it's a, that's a, I know, it's, which of my children is my favorite, is, the, is what it feels like, so. <laughs> Me? No. <laughs> that's what I always say when people ask my parents that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, so here's a question actually about Moon. Uh, how old is Moon in human years? Well, she's about five years old, I think, in book six. And, um, you know, years in Pyrea might be slightly different than years on Earth, but, um, but in terms of, like, the Pyrean year, it's, it's, she's five. Okay. So she's kind of like a young teenager, Great. I'd say. Okay. Like 14. Cool. So jump, just jumping into some more questions here so we can answer as many as possible. Uh, will Thorne be making more appearances? Yes. Um, yes. You will definitely see Thorne again. And Blaze was another one that people okay. asked about. You'll definitely see Blaze yeah. again. And Webs as well? Yes. Well, you saw Webs in book six. Um, uh, you saw Webs in book six. He's uh, it's teaching at the Jade, Jade Mountain Academy. So. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. That's actually the dragon song. That's the <laughs> melody that goes to like. it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I'd love to ask you, actually, this is a, quite, a really good question that I had while I was reading this, um, it, and uh, General Goblin asked it as well. When these characters you create with so much depth, do you have a process that you go through in that? Is there is there a preparation you do before you write them to write it, or do they just come out? Um... Yeah, well, I think about them a lot. That's that's probably what I spend the most time on is thinking about each character. Um, I, I do things like I have questions that I answer about each character, and then I have um, I have a different document for each character where I talk about um, where where I just take notes on where I think they've started and where they're going, and what sort of their essential problem is that they need to solve, and um, and I so and I ask myself a lot of questions, and then um, and then I, I talk to people about them. One of the other questions we got was. Um, how do how do other people help me work on this series? Yeah. And um, you know, much against their will. <laughs> my um my husband, for instance, gets to listen to me talk about the characters a lot. And I'm like, do you think it would make sense? Like how would you feel? Because I know how I would feel, but I'm also trying to make them all, you know, slightly different. Yeah. So what's his level of knowledge at this point? Does he know all the intricate details? <laughs> Could he write the wikia? <laughs> no, he's he, he hasn't even read most of them, my poor husband, but he's heard so much about them that I'm not sure he's ever going to read them. <laughs> oh yeah, you guys <laughs> I've like spoiled all the things. So I'm like <laughs> <laughs> told him what's going to happen because I'm like I had this really exciting idea. Let me yeah. see if it makes sense to you. So <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, he's a good listener. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone needs that. You need that. Well, you also have a whole team, uh, a whole team here at Scholastic. Yes, that's true. Um, that's true. Sitting I... off camera, making sure we don't say anything we're not allowed to. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, my wonderful editor. I couldn't do this without her either. So <laughs> she puts up with a lot of like strange questions from me. So <laughs> yeah. awesome. Um, so getting back in, getting back into this world, which I just find so fascinating, uh, scavengers and the relationship with dragons, which is one of the things I, I, I love how you introduce it in the first book that you don't you don't realize that they're there immediately. And you drop hints that there are these things called scavengers, and then you realize, oh, that's what she's talking about. They're people. <laughs> do they 
how, how do they relate to dragons? Can they understand dragons? Um, no, they can't understand dragons. Um, I would love to tell you, do more with what the people are doing in this world because I think it must be really strange to not be the top of the food chain. And, be, right. you know, they're, they definitely, they view dragons as this very sinister force that they have to hide from um, and they can't understand them. And I think that much the way dragons don't realize how sentient the humans are, the humans feel mm. the same way about the dragons. Like, they're like, oh, they're just big monsters that eat people. And, like, right. only a few of them, such as Flower, have figured out, like, oh, wait, they have art and they have music. The way Sunny has figured out, wait, the humans have art, the scavengers have art and music. And yeah. so there's a lot of, um, there's a lot more, a lot further distance they need to cover to get from, um, from between scavenger dragon communication. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we'll ever get there. <laughs> Oh, great. Okay, here's a question that just came in, which I know is on everyone's mind. How many books will there be? Oh, we are planning ten. So, I, you know, okay. I'm working on book nine right now. So, book eight is mostly done. So, it's done. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, we're working on... So, you know so many things that we that we have you can't even say it's true there were so many great questions on the forums i was like if i tell you my editor will kill me <laughs> i definitely definitely can't answer those but um oh but i did want to answer the question yeah, about please. um what flower's real name is because oh, yeah. i do know that and that's not a spoiler so um flower's real name is rose so i and, and I, <laughs> it comes up in book five where he's like, she kept pointing at this like flower on the wall. So I call her flower and she was trying to say, Rose, my name is Rose. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, her name is, her name is really Rose. Yeah. Rose, that's a flower. Yep. <laughs> exactly. You got, you got it. That's awesome. Uh, okay. So oh, we've had a, a few different questions around this idea of characters who are based on people. In real life, um, ask people asking me flower based on you was one of them that came in. Um, this one is, is quibbly. Is quibbly based on your son? Oh, so you know what that is? Is I I said something on my blog once where I was talking about the next set of books, and I said like, oh well, I sort of based Clay on my first son. I better put a, a character in the next set of books who's based on my second son, my my little mm -hmm. one. Um, and I was and yes, Quibbly is the one I was thinking of. Um, but as I was writing him, you know. My son is three, <laughs> so <laughs> Kimberly's a little bit older than that. Um, so I, so I, so he's not. They're not. There's not a very direct parallel. I do think my my that Elliot is is very very smart, the same way Kimberly is. But um, but there's a character who comes along a little bit later who is a little more like Elliot in that he is closer to being three in human years <laughs> and a little more like me me look at me look at me all the time, which um, which Kimberly is 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 not is not quite as. Kibli is less likely to put on a princess outfit and run around the house singing Frozen than my son is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've all done that at one time or another, yeah, right? Of course, who hasn't? Yeah. <laughs> totally. uh, we're getting a lot of questions about what points of view we'll see in the upcoming books. Is that something you can say, or is that a surprise? I think that's a surprise, surprise? still. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we all know Peril is going to be book eight. Okay. Um, yeah, and then, um, you know, when we have a title and everything for book nine, we'll be able to talk about that. <laughs> big, big, big reveal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, book eight's not out yet, so that, that, that's, a lot of people may not have known that. <laughs> uh, we're getting a lot of questions about Iceborns. Is that, is that a real thing? I think that's something that the... the, the they make that up? Yeah, the favorites <laughs> came up with, actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, go ahead and write your fan fiction about that, is what I would say. Um, yeah. I, there's nothing like that in the books. Yeah, what's it like to have this? Th this community is just has gotten so amazing out there with all the stories that they've, they've created. Yeah, it's just it's been amazing to watch. Just watch. I know. Watch I love you guys. I love you guys so much. I think it's yeah. um, it's daunting and delightful and wonderful. And I and especially going through and like reading all the questions that you had, I was like, you guys are too smart, and also you read too fast. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to, um, I can't, I wish I could write as fast as you can read, basically. <laughs> well, you're, you're moving along. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> you're two books ahead of us. <laughs> yeah, and I gotta say, this is, this is the biggest, this is, this is the biggest cast we've ever done, so I'm, oh, wow. uh, congratulations on, on creating such a, such a story, uh, a story that inspires so much, uh, <laughs> so much intensity. Oh, you guys are uh, so cool. Will there be any more tribes? That's a great question. Are there any secret hidden tribes? That is also a question I can't answer. Can you never answer, of course. <laughs> what was Peril's brother's name going to be? I can tell you that. Uh, although I'll probably reuse it elsewhere. So, um, 
So if you so when so when a character named Ember shows up, he's not Peril's brother. But I was gonna call him Ember when he was originally gonna be like part of the prophecy, and there was a whole yeah. a whole plan originally that I, I changed. Um, so, um, but Ember Ember is the answer to that. Have question. a lot of other things changed through the series? Have there been things like plans that you had that ended up going in a different way than what you expected? A little bit. Um, that was the biggest one. Is that I originally started with eight dragonettes in the prophecy, okay. and then changed it to five to make it a it's little a lot easier, easier to follow. Yeah. <laughs> So I had to kick out the ice wing and the two sky wings. Yeah. The twin sky wings was my plan. So, um, but yeah. Okay, here's here's a funny one. Uh, Parakeet Dragon is, is saying they had canon ice wings with British accents. Do you have different accents for the different <laughs> for the different? Cl- <laughs> you know, I think we talked about that once for the audio book. The first, the only the first book got made into an audio book, but I, the there was a conversation about like should the dragons have different? And I said if they did, it would be the ice wings and the rain wings would be the ones who have like different accents from everybody else. The others all kind of mix together a little bit more, I think. Right. Um, but the ice wings are off by themselves. They could totally have British accents. That would be cool, <laughs> or like Nordic accents. That would be awesome too. Um, yeah, and then the rain wings that kind of keep to themselves, they might have a different accent too. But I, you know, awesome. in my head, they don't have anything specific. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw all the movie questions as well. But I, I, we don't have any control over that. I would love for there to be a Wings of Fire movie. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's but someone with a movie studio has to call me and, and want to make it. So. <laughs> Or really, my agent. Don't call me. We were talking earlier in chat and saying maybe we could do a puppet show of it. <laughs> the whole thing. All all ten books together. Wow. Well, I've seen some... Um the, 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 like, videos that people have made on YouTube, I think, are, are yeah. pretty amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of fan art out there, too. It's, yeah. It's, it's really great. It's so cool. I wish I could draw like you guys. Awesome. Okay, so, uh, no, just one more question here um, about writer's block. Um, oh. Do you... do you Is that something that you run into a lot? Um, well... It's, you know, I try not, well... You go talk to your husband and ask him to solve it for you. (laughs) Exactly. Well, no, I'm like, just sit and listen for half an hour while I explain myself out of this writer's block. Talk it out. (laughs) Yeah. Um, No, it definitely happens to me. I'm definitely, um... uh, So, usually it's not just, like, sitting and staring at a blank screen. For me, it's like, I know that they're here and they need to get there, but I don't want to write them just, like, walking over there. Like, I need to, or, like, right. I, how do I make it more more of an interesting transition from this scene to this scene? Um, and so, or things like, um, like, Scar- the, the prison in book one, Scarlet's prison. I spend a lot of time being like, yeah. are they underground in, like, a normal prison? Like, that would be kind of boring, like, dungeons. Like, right. how could I make this more interesting? So, um, so specifically for writer's block, when I do get stuck, um, one of the things I do that might be helpful for all you writers out there is I will stop writing the thing I'm working on, and I'll write something else about those characters. And I'll just, like, like a different part of their story, or, like, what happened to them when they were kids, or, um, like, a alternate universe version of them or something. So I'm still thinking about them, but it, I, I don't feel like I'm obligated to to keep going in this story that's like right. it's frustrating me in some way. And often writing a, a backstory thing about them will will help me kind of um, trigger something. But yeah. yeah, figure out what I really want to talk about with them. Yeah. So if that helps at all. <laughs> yeah. And so there was another question uh, about about the writing process. How many times do you revise each one of these books? Um, well, the first book was the one I revised the most, definitely, because when you're building the world. Um, and you, and you keep figuring it out. Like you, you know, I had to go back and and fix things like over and over again. I I do a lot of revising as I'm writing, like every day I'll I'll go Mm -hmm. back and read the last two things, two chapters I wrote and like revise them as I'm going along. So I don't know. I mean, like officially it goes to my editor, um, you know, a draft goes to my editor and then I revise that Mm -hmm. and then I revise it one more time. But before it goes to my editor, it gets revised a lot. So Yeah. (laughs) yeah, definitely. So you make it look good for them first. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. So what was what was the very first? How did this start at the very beginning? What was the kernel of something that, that made Wings of Fire happen for you? Sure. Um, well, so for me, it was thinking about. Um, I always loved dragon books. I don't know if any of you guys have read like Dragon Song by Anne McCaffrey, which is. A, I read all those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved those books when I was a kid. I read so many of them, and um, and right now I'm reading the Naomi Novik um, Temeraire series, which mm-hmm. is also really great. Um, and then Joe Walton had a book. These are, those, those are adult books. Joe Walton has an adult book called Tooth and Claw, which is like a dragon society. And I was like, but it was like, it's more like Pride and Prejudice, but with dragons. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't want to do that. Exactly. She did it so well. But um, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool? All the, all the books that I'd read about dragons were um, people riding the dragons or people taming the dragons. Right. And it was a lot of like the human perspective on dragons. So I wanted to do, um, you know, 
uh, a world where the dragons are in charge because I kind of felt like that would make the most sense. <laughs> yeah. um, and the dragons. Oh, well, they are much bigger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Huge claws. Why like, aren't they why in charge? Would, yeah, why, exactly. Why wouldn't? Why would they ever let one of these little things ride on them um, yeah. if they could just eat them? So I wanted to do like the dragons are the heroes um, kind of story. Yeah. So. <laughs> Here's a good one from Cheeseburger Dragon. Um, are dragons the only mythical creatures? Are there other creatures in this world that maybe you haven't mentioned, but that you imagine? Um, hmm. No, I, I mean, I'll never say never, but um, for now, I pretty much, it's like a, it's a pretty real world, but with, but with, where the, but with dragons. Um, yeah. I mean, I've added, you know, like the dragon bite viper, which is the only mm -hmm. Snake that can like take down a dragon that's imaginary, yeah. but it's not a mythical creature exactly. So, yeah, yeah no, this is it's a pretty it's pretty much dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Great, well, but yeah, there's there's some magic in this world. I was interested in there's especially there's all these enchantments and things. How do you decide what can and can't be enchanted and how that how that magic works in this world? Sure. Well, there's only one kind of magic. Um, real. I mean, so there's the powers that 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 some of the dragons have, but right. the like specific kind of magic is animus magic. Mm -hmm. Um, and so because I wanted to limit it a little bit, I didn't want it to be just like I can do anything. Right. Um, you know. So the animus magic is you have to have a thing to enchant. Like it, it you know, you, um, it, it can't just you, you know, you have to, you have to have like an object that's like the center of the of the the magic. Um, mm -hmm. And only certain dragons, very rarely are there animus dragons, and so only certain ones have it. And, and it's also, there's like terrible consequences whenever you use it. So. There's always a price. <laughs> exactly, there has to be. <laughs> Otherwise, you could just kind of do anything you want. So, um, so yes, so that's, that's okay. sort of where the, that's the, the essence of the animus magic, Great. basically. What's my favorite dragon tribe? I yeah. um, I mean, also ask which one you would be from. Oh, I, I am a total rain wing. <laughs> like, the, dra the tribe that sleeps a lot, that's me. <laughs> um, so you're reading my mind right now? <laughs> no, wait, that's, those are the night wings. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I start shooting venom at you, that's okay, there you go. rain wing. <laughs> no, but, um, but yeah, no, I think I would, I mean, I really, I think the sea wings are really cool, too. Those are the yeah. other ones I really like, but, um. But I think I'd probably yeah. myself. That's actually what I got. we did. We were choosing earlier. Oh yeah. Was a sea wing. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so I think at this point we are going to move into the section where we talk about book seven. Oh okay. And we talk about some things that are big spoilers. This so this is a section that is only for those of you who have already read the book. So if you haven't read this book. You may want to mute it or come back and watch the rest later because we're gonna get we're gonna get into it and we're gonna talk about that. I don't want to give anything away. So you've had fair warning. <laughs> this is a, this is your spoiler alert, and now we're gonna go there. That's right. Spoilers are coming. Okay. So, will we ever learn more about the Mad Sandwing from Prisoners? Oh, that's a winglet's question. Yeah. Um, are these, yes. are these are more asked. I'm asking from wrong, the wrong, wrong list of questions. But let's okay. go ahead and answer that one. Yeah. Um, yes. I, that, that was a great, a great question, question, actually, um, that somebody noticed that character um, and then and, 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 and wanted to know if we see them again. Yes, they, that character is actually important to the story. I won't say anything more than that. <laughs> that's the problem with all these questions. is like, that's a very interesting question and really exciting, and I can't tell you a thing. Exactly. Exactly. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so here are the actual questions. Sorry about that. No, no worries. Um, did Faux Slayer lie when she said she fell in love with Prince Arctic? Uh, no, that is true. Yeah. That is true. It was, for her, it was a true love story. Yeah. It so. rang true to me, though. I, you know, I hadn't thought about that possibility until I read that. Because yeah. she tells a great story. About, about lost love. But that's exactly what I would do if I was trapped and needed, and needed someone to let me out. <laughs> that's true. Like, pull on his sympathies. Yeah. I, oh, I was in love. I wasn't stealing any. <laughs> <laughs> but it is actually, that is actually, um, it is actually yeah. true okay. from her perspective, certainly. Okay. And does Dark, Dark Stalker know that Faux Slayer is alive? Um, he does not. He does not know that. No, he thinks the Ice Wings killed her, and that's part of his problem with them, certainly. Um, and that's part of the whole Ice Wing, Night Wing drama um, yeah. that, that comes up a lot in book seven. And will come up again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so and I wanted to say that the, the whole Faux Slayer thing, um, it is interesting because she, you know, I, I, I sort of put Winter in this impossible situation where he 
you, you have to free this poor dragon. She's been trapped there for, like, thousands of years. Like, you can't leave her there. But at the same time, is this a good idea? Like, I don't know if this is going to be a good idea when she finally gets out. Oh, thank you. Someone just commented on my dragon necklace. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's very, um, in case I get lost, they know which author I am. Um, the, uh, but yeah, so it's, I think it's I think it's a very interesting question, like whether yeah. it's really a good idea to let her. Are you out. saying there might be consequences to the to that decision <laughs> be, coming yeah. up? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Without saying more than that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the next question is about the diamond trial, which I love how you you led up to that early on. You were you were hinting about the fact that the diamond trial, well, you, you, that it was a possibility. Mm-hmm. And then there's that amazing moment when when Winter finds out that that the reason that the ranking happened. It's a whole setup. I expect. Oh, I know. Poor Winter. He's terrible parents. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah. And well, and actually, that's interesting. You say that because um, because I don't think I did mention the diamond trial in the first version. This is an example of how oh. wonderful my editor is, and she was like, "You need to like like hint at it beforehand. Um, go yeah. back and like put in references to it so people would know." Like, yeah, no, I, I, yeah. <laughs> but you see that. It's, it's one of those things you see at the beginning of a book. They they drop some idea, and you know it's going to come back in a major way. Yeah. So that was that was, that was really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the the question is, why did Hailstorm do the di- diamond trial? No, because we see it all from Winter's perspective, but we don't really know what's going on in Hailstorm's head at oh, that moment. A lot of confusing things. Poor Hailstorm. He's, I mean, he really wants to get back to um, to to his life. Like he he's you know he's torn between. The life that he's been living—that's that's a lie—and um, and the life that he doesn't really remember. And so I think he chooses to go into the diamond trial, or he agrees to it. First of all, because if he doesn't, like his, he'll never get back his real Icewing life. Um, and second of all, because like this is what his parents are expecting. It's the only way to kind of turn himself like into a real Icewing again, like the, the guy he thought he was before. So, um, so yeah, that's why. I mean, he really okay. doesn't want to kill Winter, but if that's the only thing he can do, I think that's how he feels about it. Yeah, well, it's making the making the characters make those really tough choices is what makes the book so exciting. So <laughs> I know. you got to be mean to him, right? Yeah, poor character. It's all. <laughs> okay, so here's a question from Psyched Angel Thirty One. Was Pyrite an actual dragon or just an enchantment? That's a great question. Um, she was just an enchantment. She was entirely made up. Um, character like dragon, yeah. There was no no one that she was based on. Great, and uh, here's one from Emerald Dragon fifty two sixty five. What gave you the idea for the pyrite hailstorm thing? Um, <laughs> exact words. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Um, well, so that was another case where I was like, I knew Scarlet still had hailstorm, um, and I was like, so where could she be keeping him, like, to make this book really interesting? And I had to, and I was thinking like. I, you know, we, I was like I was saying about the dungeon before. I like to she yeah. keeping him in a cave somewhere. That's kind of boring. <laughs> like you know, I wanted it to be something really surprising. And then I was like, well, uh, you know, that's kind of the great thing about um, animus magic is that there it is possible to, um, to 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 have twists like this where it's like something you weren't expecting necessarily. So um, yeah. yeah, so I think that uh, you know that was where I, where I came from. Great. So we're seeing some questions on chat. We'll be be seeing more glory bringer. Uh, well, I'm sure, I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. <laughs> probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> that seems likely. I do like writing their interactions, oh. totally. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we're getting questions that they're asking for spoilers for the next book about the Lost City. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is I can't it, tell you yeah, that. No, I think I don't even get that. anything that at all. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. We will see plays again. Yeah. Um... My opinion on Whirlpool is you guys are hilarious. <laughs> like the love for Whirlpool, I think is one of the funniest, <laughs> um, loveliest things. You guys are all so smart and so interesting that you that you can like focus in on characters like that. Um, yep, that's my opinion. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> that's a great, great, great. <laughs> you, you made her laugh, and that's all that really matters in the end, right? <laughs> uh. And does Moon like anyone? You guys, you have to keep reading. That's clearly you'll you know. You'll, you'll see. Yeah. Go, go get that book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're doing a lot of questions about outlines. Did you have a very specific outline for, for, the, for the books when you go through them? I don't. I'm actually, so you know how um, those of you who are writers may know that we say that there are, there, are, there are two kinds of writers. There are the ones who outline everything really carefully, and then there are people who just kind of jump in. And I'm right. one of the people who jumps in, which is terrible yeah. for a 10-book series. I, I don't <laughs> recommend it. 
<laughs> but that's the way I do it because otherwise I get bored. Like if I have too much of an outline, um, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm just like connecting dots as opposed to like exploring the story. So usually what I do is um, I do know big things like what's going to happen um, in books nine and 10. I know I knew from like the beginning of book six, like when certain big major things were going to happen in the series. Um, but in terms of very specific outlines, no, I usually just start writing and it's not till I get about halfway through the book mm -hmm. that I, that I, I, I do a, like a mini outline of what's going to happen in the rest yeah. of it. Um, yeah. And how much do you know of the whole series arc? Do you have, is the final scene from book 10 planned out in your head? Um, no. Okay. So anything can happen. <laughs> That's true. Well, I, so I do know, I know the, I, I think I would say I know the, the biggest things that are going to happen in books nine and 10. Um, yeah. but I, you know, for, for like book five, I, when I started book one, I wasn't exactly sure which of the queens was going to win um, oh, in book wow. five. Yeah, because I because I knew I wanted them all to be terrible choices, and then they all got to be such terrible choices that I had to come up with something else. <laughs> That's basically what happened. Because <laughs> I just really wanted it to be the hardest choice ever, and then I was like, oh, I can't even. That's make that great. Choice. That's so. great. We're getting, yeah, we're getting more questions about about Prince Arctic. Is there, any, is there anything more you can reveal about the story behind that, or are we just waiting? Yeah, I think that's all stuff you'll find out. Um, <laughs> but you will find out more in book eight. I, I'm not allowed to say okay. too much about book eight, but uh, that, no, some fine. of these you questions, will, yeah, some of these questions yeah. will be answered as as soon as you can get book eight, January, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Um, so we do. I mean, we do have a few more questions in just a couple more minutes before we should before we should go. Um, and uh, oh, here's some good ones about writing. When when did you first start writing? Because you've written actually quite a number of books before you got to Wings of Fire. Yeah, that's true. Well, I wrote. Um, I mean, I was always writing when I was a kid. Um, mm -hmm. I was like you guys. I was I was I was always writing, and especially about my favorite characters. And um, I would start a lot of stories and not be able to finish them. So if that happens to you guys, don't worry. <laughs> that's that was totally me. I don't think I finished yeah. any stories until after college. I just really liked yeah. <laughs> beginnings of stories, and that's still kind of true. <laughs> um, I like beginnings and I like endings. I don't like middles. Middles are the hard part for me. So, um, but yeah, so I was writing a lot when I was a kid. When I was like, I mean, and yeah. then my first books were published like after college. So like t in the early two thousands. Like okay. my first novel was I think two thousand five. Great. So. Okay, here's my favorite question. Can dragons get sunburned? <laughs> <laughs> that, is, um, that is a really funny question. I'm going to go with no. It seems no. like they have really thick scales. I think yeah. they'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not, not like me. I'm like easily sunburned. Um, but I, I think dragons know. <laughs> yeah. And do I make ideas in, while I'm falling asleep? So I think that was another question, too. Yeah. Is like when and where do your best ideas come to you? Mm -hmm. I actually do a lot of like... As a, like, especially when I've been working and I can't work anymore and I'm like, I have to just go to bed because I'm so tired. I'm like, well, at least what I can do is lie in bed and think about this problem. Um, and I feel like I do get a lot of good ideas that way. The trick is not forgetting them by the next morning. Right. <laughs> so I try, you know, if I were smarter, I'd have a notepad by my bed and write right. them all down. Or just record them. And then, yeah. course, then sometimes you find out the ideas you have when you're half asleep or are <laughs> not completely crazy. It's true. That's totally true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. oh, now we're getting all the food questions about dragons making pancakes. <laughs> I'm sure dragons can make pancakes, I think right? They could make pancakes. They yeah. seem to be able to do pretty much. They can build great palaces and. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> how, do, how do they do it? How does it, how does it work? Which part? Yeah, the making pancakes. They're making pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like ours. I'm not like our pancakes. I'm totally. sure. I'm sure. Uh, great. And I like the question, what are all your favorite things? All, all your favorite my favorite things. things. Just, if you could just list them, <laughs> yeah. we'll be here for a couple hours and just get it all out of the way. Sure, okay. Yeah. So I'll start with fan wings. Fan wings are my favorite things. Um, and, uh, and dragons and hot chocolate and my editor. And you guys. <laughs> so I'll, awesome. I'll leave. All right. <laughs> Okay, well, we've, we've hit so much. Are there any any final questions we didn't get to? Um, we, we'll is do the one map about, supposed yeah. to look like a dragon? Yeah, the, yes, the oh, map I is love, supposed uh, to yeah. look like a dragon. Um, yeah, I actually did a sketch, a terrible sketch, um, before yeah. before this. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's definitely supposed to look like a dragon. But what I did was I sat down, and I recommend this for anyone who's writing, like, big fantasy series. I sat mm -hmm. down and I um, with an atlas, and I, 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 I went through looking for things that looked like dragon parts and I put them all together in like in my in my ridiculous sketch and then a real artist turned it into a beautiful drawing so yeah. that he looks even more like a dragon but yes that's totally intentional <laughs> that's great
All right. Well, thank you so much for coming in. This has been amazing. Thank you, so much knowledge has been shared. <laughs> I hope so. Um, yeah, and I hope I hope you guys. I hope we can do this again, or that yeah, I can we'd love to come back to the forums and um, and that you can come to my events. I went tonight. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah well thank you to everyone out there for coming for all your amazing questions uh, these are I mean just this has been this has been incredible we've had the biggest turnout for any chat so far so thank you so much <laughs> and incredible questions and incredible focus on all the details thank you let me sort it out some of the dragon mechanics questions